it was a crazy idea. Maybe it will shorten my life instead of lengthen because we study mainly uh, is now only the chemistry of aging. How do organisms uh, age? What is its chemistry? And I can tell you, it's not very different from aging of a car. It's a corrosion of the material. For car is corrosion of metal. For us is the corrosion of proteins, the molecules that do everything. It's a place where doing something that people anywhere at Stanford, Harvard, MIT are doing is forbidden. We here the rule is you do something that nobody else is doing. It could be it could be crazy, it could be even stupid, but not repeating, copying what is done somewhere else, because it's already done somewhere else. Okay. Now this is this this is the principle of, of uh, raison d'etre, the reason of existence of this institute and there was a lot of a lot of work. If I knew how much, of course, I, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, naivete. And you know, who was it? Mark Twain who said, reasonable people adapt to the society, to environment. Unreasonable people try to change it. Therefore, all progress is due to unreasonable people, and I am one of them. Uh, very, very unreasonable. So, <laughs> Uh, we are usually shy, especially my generation of, you know, of 68, to talk about oneself and then my students after decades said, we don't know anything about you, how did you do that and so on. No, we should make things personal while we have the freedom to be persons. One day, I, I hope not too soon, will be integrated in a system where we'll be like cells of my organism, anonymous barcoded cells, and while we are not that yet, enjoy it, like, like the good food that I, I, I hope it will be there. Let's go this way then. This is the lecture room, just peek in, uh, where we have uh, you know, up to 150 people can can be, can be seated here and this is the art science room. And so this is the place where, where uh, people come, stay in one of these 24 rooms until they want. What poisons creativity is the purposefulness, is the milestones, you know. In six months you should be there, in 12 months you should be there. It's all bullshit, of course, it is, and it doesn't work very well. I come from France, where this is very difficult. You know, French culture is, is horrible, in this direction, great. But for in the other direction, you can't find the toilet, even in the nicest place. You understand? Yeah. Is, things are mixed here. Uh, and experiments are sort of done in one. This is one of the one, two, three, four, five, five large laboratories. Oops. And then they are measured in particular room where there the, are the uh, downstairs usually, where the fine physical analysis is, is, is done. And by the way, the only slogan that I had from the beginning that Medils, the Mediterranean Institute for the Study of Life, that uh, Medils is the investment in surprise. If there's no surprise, there's no discovery. Tony, you've been listening to the Adriatic Sea for about 20 years, if I gather. Yes. Have Not you. Continuously, but. Yeah, but have, you, <laughs> have you heard any evolutions, any changes, stuff you did hear or did not hear 20 years ago that you hear now? Um. Well, uh, I cannot really um, mm, compare that because um, I was filming on different locations with a different equi equipment in the early time with a better equipment than, than today. 
but um, uh, from the point of uh, hydrophone, quality of the hydro hydrophone, um, I can only say it not through the listening, uh, through the recording, but through my uh, living experience, that the noise pollution is it's higher. For any species and for us, normal is to what you are adapted. That could be hell. If you are adapted to hell, it will be paradise. Yeah. The definition of adaptation. And I had an experience, I was diving a lot, at Island Shedro. <clears throat> I was alone and diving for, for, for the fish, and at once, something incredible, as if somebody has put a metal container on my head and hit with a baseball bat. <laughs> and I almost lost my consciousness. You know? And I learned that what I wouldn't have heard out, out, outside, if I were just... You know, uh, there were some peasants fishing with dynamite, oh, ki killing wow. fish, putting dynamite in it. And I didn't see them. I didn't know where they are. Uh, but it was, of course, it's a, it's a shocking mm -hmm. non-adaptation, of course, of myself mm -hmm. in the sea with this terrible now, you know, uh, noise of explosion, which even didn't sound underwater like explosion. I felt like I was in a metal container and somebody oh. was hitting it. And, uh, and so, uh, the, uh, this is important to know because my first thought was, ah, you know, poor fish, and it's true. And it was always poor fish or poor us suffering under conditions that you didn't adapt to. And there are no good or bad conditions. There are those that are adapted, and they are by definition good. They could be hell, they, it, it would be a good, great hell. Yeah? And uh, I wonder, what if you did the reciprocal experiment? That is, to go and dive into the sea and have the microphone detector outside. Um, <laughs> in a way, uh, uh, with, with your experience, does the sound recorded in the sea make you better feel uh, in the aquatic environment, being in the sea, or, or, or we are so well adapted to, to, to hear things from air, through air, that everything else is, is, is non-natural. In, in a way, you know, to, to do the reciprocal experiment, uh, record in the water, listen, uh, listen outside of the water like you did, you know, and then do the, the, the opposite. I, I'm always kind of uh, excited to discover new things, new things for me, mm. uh, to be clear. Yeah, that's uh, so To discover... Um, um, different ways of hearing, uh, different sounds, different qualities of the sounds, different structures. And I don't know, but basically we, we are used to listen sounds through the water until the moment uh, we get born. Mm -hmm. So we are used to also to hear different kind of sounds not the ones that our yes. eardrums are uh, only right. vibrating on the air, but we forget about it and we don't have a memory of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do have somewhere hidden yes. yeah. that kind of uh, attracts me uh, to discover all these weird sounds, like a human body sounds um, that um, you cannot hear until, uh, until you put your ear on someone's mm -hmm. body and you hear different body sounds. So all these unusual sounds are something that excite me. Uh, that I'm developing since years about the diatoms uh, microalgae, uh, focusing on the ecology and the importance of the invisible existence for the maintenance of the bio biodiversity and the life of many species, including the human beings. So, Thanks to the, the support of Katarina Trajkovic and Sandra Reich from the Medils, I've been able to sampling and observing under the microscope 
facilities of the Institute as a first step to identify possible diatom species inhabiting the nearby sea water. And um, yeah, this is uh, the diatom that uh, I've been able to uh, discover and to find, which name is the Gophonema. Uh, this is another type of diatom that uh, I just, uh, uh, let's say, purchased from another lab because I was interested to compare different shapes and uh, morpho morphology of, uh, of the species. Uh, so we um, prepared slides for bright field microscopy, checking uh, uh, the first possible presence of diatom. And then, for, uh, um, furthermore, I moved uh, my uh, research uh, towards the very first step, uh, ta taxonomy identification. And uh, thanks to the support of the Croatian National Diatom Collection of Zagreb, from the University of Science uh, Department of Biology, I met the professor uh, Gligora Udovic and the assistant Mirela Sushnara. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> but you're doing well, a great job. job. I don't mind that. <laughs> so they helped me to identify uh, this uh, specific type of algae, uh, of diatom that I mentioned. That is, it's actually leaving the, uh, the water ecosystem of, uh, of the medis. Thank you.